Hey, how we doing? Welcome to uh, Under the Bridge. This is our uh, one of one of our first many events that we're going to be having here on the southeast side. So I'm glad that everybody had a beautiful day today. I'm glad everybody come out and join us. So feel free to come in. This is our newest thing under the bridge. So I want to invite everybody to come on in and view the show. Let's see what we think. Come on in. Everybody's welcome. Is, he refers to himself as the Sharpie King. His name is Yemi Melan. Melan. But anyways, uh, the Sharpie King, is, his main media, believe it or not, is Sharpie, pencil, and some light pastel that he uses. Very interesting person from the, from the community. We're very proud to have him here, uh, sharing this space here with us. He comes from Jalisco, Mexico. Oh, no, I'm sorry. He comes from Acapulco, from, from that end of it. So again, this is Yemi. Now, the works that you see here in this table right here in front of you is the works of Roman Villarreal, which is myself. I'm a sculptor. And what you see here is two different samples of two different stones. This is an alabaster. These are two boxers and a clinch. This is a, a series that I did of horses, which is very interesting because horses are kind of my, my mainstream. This is a stone from Texas called Caliche. Now, as we swing around, you'll notice that we have a, a little bit more works of uh, Yimmy, who has about, I think in this show he has, must have about a good nine or ten pieces in this particular show. What you see here at this table, again, is some of my recent works in the stone of, uh, it's called uh, Serpentine from Africa. I was able to buy a ton of this about a year ago, about a year and a half ago, and I shared it with my fellow, you know, because it's co-op space, and we all had our series of rocks, so I was able to get a hold of maybe about a good, maybe 15 rocks. And these are the beginning of this particular stone. I, it's a really beautiful stone to work with. What we realize about this stone is that it doesn't need very much to, to create. It's, it's a, we call it, what we call a minimalist. Beautiful, beautiful stone to work with. Now, directly next to Yimi is another fellow artist from, the, from Pilsen by the name of Robert Valadez. Robert Valadez is one of the top artists in the Pilsen area or in Chicago itself. He's a, a, a realist. He has a lot of murals. Uh, he's a, actually basically he's a muralist by profession. And we're very, very proud to have him here in the community because the possibility that very near future he will be doing a project here in the 10th Ward. We're kind of negotiating that right now. Now, what's interesting here that you see, these are the works by a group of people, uh, a few friends of ours, by the name of Luz, Maria Castillo, and Derek Clemens. They have an organization called Kokom Kokomo. And they're developing this line of, of furniture, clothing, and sculpture, and, and along with their paintings. Very interesting uh, uh, works that they're doing because they're taking these materials and they're redesigning everything. So it's really interesting to see what they're doing you know, in, in collaboration here in the neighborhood. Very beautiful work. I've shown with them for, for, for quite a few years. Now, as we come into the space, um, we have the artist Robert Pito Ramirez from the community. Uh, Robert Ramirez, I've known him for a number of years. We all went to high school together. So it's really interesting to see him developing his art because he's a, a retired uh, a city worker who now dedicates himself to his art. He's always been, was an artist, but at this particular time in life, he's allowed to now to produce his work. And he got a very interesting style that he's working with. We're very glad to have him on board with the, with the group. Uh, he's from the neighborhood. Very, very reasonable right now before he begins because, like I said, he's working very hard and, uh, and like I said, he has a whole series of work. I'm, I'm really, we can't wait to see what he does in the near future because this is just the beginning. I got a feeling that as, as we work in larger work, he's going to be working in larger scale. So we're going to be seeing a lot of his particular work. Uh, again, this is Roberto Ramirez. Here, on this particular wall is another good friend of mine. His name is Sura Dupart. He's also a sculptor, painter, musician. You can almost say that he's a renaissance because he does a little bit of everything, which is really interesting because a lot of artists who are urban artists who are self-taught, for some strange reason, they're very uh, apt to do a lot of other things. Now, he's a painter, sculptor. He's also a jazz musician. So he incorporates all the elements into his art to, to be the artist. So it's kind of like a, what they call renaissance, which is interesting. And uh, we share a space in Indiana. We don't have any of his sculptures here, per se, but this is a, a good introduction of his paintings. 
but he's also a very famous sculptor. Again here, you'll also see a little tidbit. This is a friend of ours by the name of Evelyn Davis, who is a fellow artist, teacher, who's been around for many, many years, who is currently working on this new series of works with this kind of ceramic type style. Now this particular one is, is kind of our newest works that she's doing, so it's not actually for sale, but in the near future she's going to be doing quite a bit of this type of work in them. So you'll be seeing more of this style again. Again, this is Evelyn Frazier Davis. And down here, again, is another one of my works. This is a piece of, of alabaster that I did maybe about a good four or five years ago. I did a whole series of these studies like this. And this is just a, a, just a study. It really doesn't have a name or anything like that. But because it's, an, it's like maybe I did about maybe four or five of this particular style. This is, this is what they did right here. Now, above me is another uh, fellow artist from Indiana. His name is Omar, I think his last name is Marin. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure his name is Omar Marin. His father was a very famous conguero from the early years in the bands here in, uh, in, in Indiana and in the harbor. His brother is also a very famous painter also that comes from the old school. His brother's name is Rooster. I'm not sure what his real name is, but that's his street name is Rooster. But this is just a small tidbit of the work that they're actually doing in Indiana. They are very experimental. They're doing a lot of work. Goes into the hip hop thing, but they're also taking whatever they're doing and they're moving it over to canvas, which is very, very, uh, uh, all the young hip hop artists at one point in their life have to go to canvas. And this is a perfect example of an artist that's going through the transition. Again, this is uh, Omar. And this is more of Robert, Roberto Pio Ramirez. This is more of his co color style that he's working with. And like I said, he's experimenting, he's developing. So I feel that in the next couple of years, we'll be seeing a lot more uh, unique style from this particular artist. And again, he's home, he's from the neighborhood, born in the bush. We all went to school, to high school together, which is very interesting that, uh, that, I, that, I, that, he, that I like what he's doing. He's really progressing with his work. So you'll be seeing more of his works in the near future because we're gonna be sharing this space. So he is one of our South Chicago artists. Now, over here in front of the bar right here is a series of different work. This is a young artist by the name of Cartoon Farrell. Now, he is a very famous artist in a certain sense because he traveled all through Europe and all that. This is just a small sample of what he actually does. You know, so it gives you an idea. Uh, Cartoon Farrell will be participating with us in, in, in the, later on in the future shows, but his artwork is very large scale. This is just a small, small sample. These figures that he did here, he traveled through Europe with them and he developed these hip hop figurines with Ray Can. Very, very colorful figurines that he developed. Just that we only have one sample here of his particular work, but it gives you the idea on how he deals with it. Again, this is the artist, Cartoon Farrell. Now, here is the work of my wife and fellow artist, Maria Villarreal. Now, what's interesting about Maria is that these particular, uh, these are her, her, her porn hut styles. But she works in many, many medias and besides this. She's also a textile muralist. She's a textile artist. She does mosaic murals. She works in a lot of the different uh, medias that ordinary I wouldn't work. She's been teaching for the public schools and different organizations for the past 20-something years. So. This is just, like I said, a very, very, she's such a busy person doing, she very rarely has an opportunity to do her own personal work. But when she does do it, she does some very unique things. Like this is, like I said, this is just a small, small sample of what Maria Villarreal actually does in, in, in her work. Up here again, we have another one of Evelyn Fraser Davis's works. We brought two. But she's getting ready to do a whole series of these works, and it's very interesting where the way she's dealing with her subject matter, because she's actually an ex-teacher, retired, who now is dedicating her, her time now to her arts, her career in the arts. And we're hoping in the near future to see very much more work of, uh, of Evelyn's in the near future. Up here, what you see up here next, is a series of works of mine that's done in this caliche. The one in the center, believe it or not, is actually a show that I, we just did in uh, Pilsen dealing with guns. And we produced 360 something guns to show how many young people were killed in Chicago during this period of time. So uh, with Sarah Ward, 
and the South Chicago Arts Center uh, leased a space in Halston and 18th Street. It's called East Pilsen. And they did a show, I think, last month dealing with the subject of, of these, uh, these, these murders and what's been going on. I just can't remember the exact name of the show, but it's a, it was a very, very powerful show. I wish that more of the community were able to see it because it showed guns at all levels. They made paper guns made out of pencil. Any imaginable thing that you could think of, they made guns to represent what is going on in the city and the evil. Now, up here in this far corner, we were able to get one works, and her name is Ashley Hernandez. Ashley Hernandez is a student of ours that came through the South Chicago Art Center through Sarah Ward's group in the early years. She's a very, very talented young lady. Uh, I believe right now she's going to be studying three-dimensional animation art. This is what she's going to school for, which is really interesting because in the early years, I was able to work with her and we did a sculpture together where she did this big giant eye. It was really unique when I asked her, hey, uh, Ashley, what, what do you want to do? And then she said, well, I want to make this eye. And believe it or not, when people see this eye, it's unbelievable because we were able to inlay another stone into the stone. And it, and it was the only time that I, myself, as a sculptor, along with my student, ever did just AI. And it was her creation, and it came out excellent. I was very proud of her. And we're all very, one thing that was really important to us is that all these young people that are coming out of the South Chicago Art Center, a lot of them are following up in their art careers, which we're very all very proud of from this community. And this is one of our young ladies that we should be very proud of, Ashley Hernandez. We'll be hearing about her in the near future quite a bit. Okay, now, as we turn here, we're seeing the works of Victor Montes. Montes. Now, Victor and myself, we've been, we're, we're, we're Chicago artists, and we've been showing over the last couple of years together for many, many years at different events, Pils and Northside. Uh, Victor is, a, I think, I believe he's a maestro. Uh, he, Victor is very interesting because he does a little bit of everything. He's a very interesting person to know because he has a lot of extensive knowledge and and he has a, and if you ever want to have a good opinion on what's going on, Victor is the person to speak to. Because like I said, he's, he's, we, we go back many, many years in the movement. We go to the very first years when we started doing all these works in different places. But this is the man that we all kind of developed together and as we were going. Victor Montes. Now, you'll see behind me also there's a piece of metal. This is my experimentation uh, on the first time that I worked with metal. I worked with Oswaldo Sandoval. He owns a, a, sculpt, a welding studio in just on the border of Indiana where we're at. So last year, we all started getting, working with him and we started picking up scraps and this. And he was, hey man, we do this. Uh, we put together a couple of metal sculptures. And this was the first time that I ever worked with metal. This one is called a curandero. And basically what a curandero is, basically it's like a shaman kind of a technique. So what I did is I took a simple figure like this but being the sculptor that I am, I wasn't satisfied with that enough, so I had to add one more element. And the element was his spirit animal, which is basically the owl. In this case, it was the owl. And when anybody sees the works of Roman Villarreal, you'll always notice that I always do more than one image. Something happens to me. I'm doing one thing, then I'll turn it around, and something magical will happen, and I create something else on the opposite side. In this particular case, it was this owl, which is a spirit animal of a curandero. They all have some kind of animal that is their spirit animal. And in this particular case, his is the owl. And this was the first time that I've ever actually actually worked with metal. And um, I was very pleased with the results. I got a few more pieces of metal coming out in the near future, but they're kind of a little bit too big for this particular show. But hopefully, if I have an opportunity, I'll be able to do just a little bit more of this type of work, because I really like it. It's different for me. Now, over here, on this side, is the works of Charles Shields. Charles is also a fellow teacher. We all work at the South Chicago Art Center with Sarah Ward. And, um, I mean, there's really not too much to say about Charles. Charles has an ex such an extensive amount of work. And uh, we're very proud to have him here with us. And uh, I, I wish I could say more, but see, Charles has had so much work. And uh, he's accomplished basically as more as a maestro because he has a lot of students that he's been working with over the years that are very, very proud to have worked with Charles. He's a very, uh, the way he deals with his students is very, very commendable. I mean, he, he is just an excellent person to learn from. Now, up here is the works of his wife. 
She is also a fellow artist who got a whole series of works. And this is only one of many that we've shown here. And the reason they're here together in this particular spot is that, we, you know, we, when we put it together, they kind of fit it together. So, or and everybody would have moved them over. But in the near future, you'll be able to see more of her work. Okay, this artist right here is another one from the Kisa Studios from Indiana. This young man, his name is Louis Ader. I'm not sure what his last name is. But the way he spells it is eight E-R. He's a young artist that started developing this hieroglyphic style and it kind of fit with him because uh, over the years I landed up owning maybe three of his work because they're so powerful and so different. And, uh, and he's young, he's only like I think in his late 20s, but he's really passionate about what he's doing with his work and he's really developing something that is kind of unique to himself. And we're very proud to have him here as, in the group. But again, he's a, a fellow artist from Indiana. Now, the artist here that we're seeing here, this is a piece of interesting material that he's working. His real name, is, well, his, his urban name is Traz, which is uh, interesting because the way everybody has these hip hop names, in this particular case, is Traz. But his real name is Gary. I just can't remember real right now offhand his last name because a lot of times you. You meet certain people and you call them by their one name and you never bother to ask what their real names are. And this happens to happen a lot with hip hop artists because like for instance, Ader, we hardly ever even knew that his real name was Lewis. You know, until we find out later on. Now Traz is one of the ones that's been working, been the group for, for many, many, I think he's one of the founders of the Kisa organization. There were two, like, they, they were all together. Now what he's working here, it's an oxidation with metal and things. So what he's doing here, he's going to be doing a whole series of these particular types, which is really interesting because what he's doing is I just oxidation on the metal, then he takes a tool, scrapes it out, and does the pattern from there. So it's really, really unique in what he's doing. He also has another one here that we'll pan to in a minute. But this is uh, one of our leaders from the past. This is Cesar Chavez, if nobody recognizes who the figure is. Again, this is uh, Traz from Kisa Studios. Now, again here, it's a sample again of my wife, Maria Villarreal's uh, extensive work on what she does. This particular piece is a tribute to Frida Kahlo for Dia de los Muertos uh, altar. And what she did here, she took a corset and, and put all these images of Frida Kahlo and then added image of color. But it's the way she deals with her, uh, her artwork that's really unique because uh, in this particular uh, month of Dia de los Muertos, this particular year, I think Maria, along with Marge Guerra, put together a series of about maybe six six altars in the South Chicago and Eastside area. One of the ones that I think was very commendable on both their parts was they had one for the fire department at the South Chicago uh, Chamber's office. Beautiful. You know, I'm glad that, uh, well, we have to start recognizing uh, all our leaders. We should, by all rights, Every year during the end of the month, we should have something for our fellow office police officers who are doing an excellent job in the community. Uh, we, sometimes we give them a hard time, but you understand one thing, it's not an easy job or what they have. We're very proud and honored that they're here helping us out because without them, we would be in some serious trouble. So I feel that we should have more tribute to firemen and police officers in the near future so they could have an altar so that we could show a lot more respect and, and, and that we really appreciate what they're doing. Because they're very, very important in our lives. We, of all people, should know because we've already had two fires in our home. And if it wasn't for the fire department, we would have been lost everything. And, they, and they, I can never say enough for how they have helped us, the fire department. And I wish we could do more. But how we do more is by representing and showing that we care for them through our shows, such as Dia de los Muertos and bringing them up whenever we have an opportunity. This is very, very important for the community. Now, what you see up here now, these three series, is another fellow artist by the name of Felix Maldonado. His, his painting name is called Flex. Now, Flex, I believe, is Art Institute. I'm, 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 I'm kind of sure he was Art Institute. But uh, I met him quite a few years. I think I met him first before everybody else. And F Flex is, um, I mean, he is something else. Flex has uh, a, a, a huge variety of work. But what I like about what he's doing, he started off with the hip hop, but he never stopped experimenting and working with different styles and media and how he's doing it. 
Like he took a simple loteria card and created a whole series of images representing urban life, la mano, el alcalde, uh, 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 um, alacran, that's what that is, that's a scorpion. Now this one represents, believe it or not, his father who was a welder. That's what this basically represents, this particular one over here. And again, this is Kisa Studios, and they just threw, just a couple of weeks ago, they threw a Dia de los Muertos show that was just excellent. Uh, they started off in a, as a small scale thing and just grew and grew and grew. But the interesting thing about all of us is that we're all sharing this space now. And it's really unique that we're all collaborating with each other. We help each other out. Whenever we did anything like this, all we got is, hey, guys, we're doing this and this. We're, we're with you. Which is very, very good to have a good support when you're dealing in the community in the arts because it gives everybody the different styles and variations on what we're doing. Now, on this particular wall here, is the work of Luz Godina. What's interesting about Luz, she uh, went to school with a lot of my friends at, uh, at the Academy of Fine Arts, and she picked up, uh, she's, a, she's a realist and she's painting in oil. But I, what I really like about what she's doing is she's really wants to do a study of the community. So in a certain sense, Luz is actually just getting started in a certain sense to developing her work. And she's from the community here. Is another fellow friend of mine by the name of Fernando Garcia. Fernando Garcia uh, just, just joined us just recently. Uh, when he brought these works in here, at first we, we were kind of surprised because we didn't know actually what he was doing. But believe it or not, these works are done in pencil, colored pencils. I mean, he has developed uh, something as simple as colored pencil and taken it to a whole new level. He's also now doing a series of paintings and oils and acrylic. But his pencil work that he's doing here in this particular series is really, really out there. I mean, when you see him, they're so realistic that even when you see the picture, he hasn't actually made the picture look better in, in his work. And in the near future, we're going to be seeing a lot more work of Fernando. It's just that, like right now, he's getting ready to set up his studio and getting ready to do a series of works. So we will be seeing quite a bit of work in the near future of this particular artist, Fernando Garcia. Uh, so hopefully, uh, in the next show, you'll be able to see to, to actually to what extent he's doing. Excellent. If anybody here in the community wanted to collect somebody from our community, while he's developing this thing, this would be the artist, uh, Garcia, right here. Frame these things would look beautiful. It's just that right now, uh, in this particular show, usually in most shows, everything has to be framed and matted. In this particular show, we were a little bit more flexible with the artists and we let them bring in things and kind of more raw. But if you matted and framed these, these things would look just beautiful, beautiful. Okay, this is Fernando Garcia. Now, here is another sample of Traz, Gary Traz. This is uh, Maria Felix. Again, this is the style of oxidation and just shaking the metal and putting it together. This is a very unique style. I, I've seen a little bit, I had an opportunity to set, see more of this particular work. And when you see it all together, this is very, very impressive because it's different. There are some artists in, in, in California that are doing something similar. But actually, a Traz is kind of like the pioneer of this particular style of work. Even though it's being done, but, but not to the level that He's getting ready to do. He's going to do a whole series of these real very soon. That uh, we'll all be able to share this, and when he produces it, we'll be able to have it somewhere, if not here, somewhere close by, so that we could all see this particular style. Very unique and very interesting. If anybody ever wanted to collect something that's totally, totally new and modern, this is the artist to collect. This is Traz. How is he creating the image on the metal? Um, what is he I doing? believe he either he uh, hand sketches because he's a very good artist. I mean, he he's a realist in a certain sense. So I believe he just does a quick sketch and then just follows the pattern to the oxidation. Is is he putting paint on there? Is he stripping the uh, metal? No, or? I think all he's using is just stripping, and he adds this to. And how you do this is just I think believe it or not, you add water or something to give it more rust, and then he just takes away, and just adds the. Like, almost like if you were doing a, a, a charcoal and you were just taking away and adding. Mm. Similar process, except that you have to use a piece of a grinder. That's the only difference. So his pencil now is a grinder instead of a, a chalk. Okay, now here again is another sample 
of my wife Maria's extensive work. This is a quill that she did uh, dealing with an issue that was in Indiana. I think it was called 520 or Brooklyn. But anyways, it was a political issue that, was, that involved Latino race as far as uh, documentation. So we did a series of works, and this was her contribution to this particular subject that was shown in Indiana. This was a show that was in Indiana, it was, uh, there, I think, about a year ago. And I had dealt, I, I'm, I'm almost pretty sure that it was called 520, was something that they were going to pass. But I could be wrong, could be, but, but that's basically what this is represents. You know, uh, illegal immigrants and the, what they're going through. And, uh, <coughs> well, this is basically her interpretation. I mean, through cloth, which is very interesting the way she approached this. This artist here is a good friend from a long time ago. His name is Corey Rodriguez. Corey has been a photographer in spirit for many, many years. This is just a small, small sample of what Corey has done. Corey is extensive. He has so much uh, images and historical stuff that he's done in South Chicago that we would be amazed. Corey could come in here and fill a room like this like it would be nothing because that's how much work that he's done in the past. He's also documented a lot of us artists in the past. So he has a lot of documentation of us actually working, uh, struggling, and different forms. So if he ever puts together something interesting for South Chicago, it's going to be very South Chicago because he really captured the image of South Chicago at all levels. So if anybody ever uh, has an opportunity to see the name of Corey Rodriguez, the photographer, you're in for a treat. Because hopefully in the near future, he'll be able to, like all of us, do something really grand. And then me, I would see him putting together a book about our community, Corey Rodriguez. Now here, is interesting because this is our young artist. Her name is Cece. This is also one of our students from the South Chicago Learning Center. We're very proud of her. Now, this person here, Danny Carter, goes back to the beginning of the movement. Danny Carter uh, goes back to the group of artists that were involved in the Wall of Respect painted years and years ago, by, I think by a guy by the name of Eddie Harris. Now, Danny Carter wasn't directly involved in the painting of the Wall of Respect, but he comes from that series of artists that came from down south. I believe he's from Mississippi. And uh, Danny Carter has extensive, extensive work. He's been around for a long. He's one of the old masters of the uh, of this particular thing in the, from the early years, and we're very proud that now he's living in our community, and uh, we usually have more works of his of Danny. But like I said, he was very been kind of busy trying to you know stay alive as an artist, so he was able to share one piece with us that he did in '04. But he has extensive collection. Now, if anybody wants to be historically by, this is the artist that has to be in your collection because he goes back to the beginning. And what he has to say and what he represents is so important to the history. What I'm having here, what I'm holding in my hand is again one of my works. This was done with a stone, an African stone called uh, a serpentine. This is kind of like that river rock. And this is just a quick study on my part on the stone. Uh, when you st I studied the stone, I looked at it, and all I seen here was like a little cub, kind of a kind of a little kind of a cat type creature. And I just followed the flow, and very simple, and just went with it. Not complicated, not, you know, but I just love the color of the stone. It's so beautiful that you really don't have to do too much to it to really to make it work. Now, here, again, is a perfect example on the South Chicago Art Center, what happens in the Art Center. This is the work of Anthony, let me see, what is Anthony's last name? Anthony's last name. Well, it'll come to me in a minute. But it just gives you an example. Oh, here it is, right here. Anthony Steele. Matter of fact, that he's even using the South Chicago Art Center thing, which I'm glad. This young man came through Sarah Ward's thing when he was a young, young boy. He must have been about, I think, in his 11 or 12 when he first crossed Sarah's path. And he has developed to such a fantastic caliber of artist that he is unbelievable. There's almost nothing that Anthony came to. He now teaches at uh, the center with Sarah and the rest of us. And uh, he's such an excellent young man. If anybody ever had an opportunity to go in education, this would be the young man to, to do it. Now, because financially he can't meet the criteria to go to the Art Institute or any of the schools of higher learning, but if this young man had an opportunity or a backer to send him to these things, he would not fail. Because he, he has this spirit in him that is just so unique to see in the community, and he has this fire about him. 
And this is a sample of works that he worked with another fellow artist by the name of Phil Schuster. Phil Schuster is one of the most top sculptors here in the Chicago area. And Anthony had an opportunity to, to work with him. So that, that's what makes it so interesting that no matter who he worked, he's worked with me and he's done sculpture with me. He works here. But like I said, he's a young man that is it's totally deserving of going to the Art Institute. But because of finances, this is what happens in the community. But it never hampered his spirit. He will continue to work. I don't care on what he does. He paints, he draws, he sketches. He's just one energy, energy. And this is the caliber of young people that are coming out of South Chicago and that are passing through Sarah Ward at the South Chicago Arts Center. We're very proud of this, these young men, CC. Now, if we pan over this way, we're seeing the works of oh, a dancer for the Montu. He's been a Montu dancer, I think, for a good 25 or more years. But Harry is a jack of all trades. Harry can do anything. Harry can sculpt or a paint. Or how he, how he, uh, like he takes something as simple as a photograph, wraps some wire, and takes everything to another level. So what's interesting about the way, the way he deals with, he, he, in other words, some artists just get to one level and then boom, it's finished. Well, for some strange reason, in Harry's mind, Harry continues to go on and on and adds all these extra elements that we wouldn't even think of adding. Like this particular thing right here, as simple as it is, it turns into an owl. The eyes, the nose, and, it, and all it is, it's just a matter of twisting wire, but it's just how certain artists deal and represent. Now, when you see his sculpture work, he's amazing, totally amazing. There's almost nothing that he can't work with. Now, here, again, is one of the students from the South Chicago Art Center. This is Maria Vargas, I think her last name is. Now, Maria is going to school right now, and I'm not sure, uh, I'm pretty sure she's going to follow some kind of career. But what's interesting about her, we told her about this show, and like all artists, all artists, last minute. She finished this day before or a couple hours before the show was actually open. She shows up with her work. Totally unique because she took all the things from around that she had, which is very limited, paper, leaves, and things like this, and put this totally unique figure thing together because she took everything that's around her and that's what really makes an artist, because you grab things that are around, you're laying on the floor, this and that, you pick them up, boom, boom, and all of a sudden, next thing you know, you create something. Now, if she was able to create and had her own studio and this and that, could you imagine the work that she would create? This is just found items. I could imagine what would happen in the, after she finishes her career in school, the type of work that she's going to be able to, to produce. This is a young lady that this community should be very proud of to, to have in the community, because she is going to be one great artist, or one great art instructor, because the passion is there. The excellent teacher, she's very patient. So she has all the right credentials to be that artist and that instructor or teacher. So again, this is, an this is another sample of what goes through the South Chicago Art Center, Sarah Ward's children. Again, every single one of these young people that are here are all continuing their education. That is fantastic, that is fantastic. This artist here, behind Maria. His name is Ish Mohammed uh, Nieves. But see, Ish is, of all the artists, he's the one that is doing, uh, he, he's extensive. He's got so much work right now. He's got, uh, I think, two or three major one-man shows going on right now as we speak. He is also from Indiana. He is also one of the founders of the Kisa Art Movement. They all came together, I guess, together as a group. I think it was either, it was uh, Ish, Flex, Traz, and maybe one other person that actually created Kisa Studios. And once it was created, Kisa has produced some of the most major art shows and during the time in Indiana on their own. Uh, myself, I have participated with them in many of their shows that we have done in the past, and Ish has always been the guy that curates the show. So anytime anything ever happens or goes on here, it always falls on Ish's shoulders. And when you meet him, you'll know why, because he is uh, uh, very, very strong, very strong in his art and, and the way he puts it together. And when he puts a show together, he puts a show together. He's, he he, he does, goes all out. And we're very proud that we were even able to show in about a good four shows with him. But it shows you the caliber and what Ish could do. That's Ish. Here is another piece of Victor Montes' work. Victor well, is always experimenting. I mean, there's, there's almost very little you could say about Victor because Victor has so much work 
when you go to his place, I'm like almost going to my studio. It's just overwhelming the stuff that we have. I mean, we have a a lot. Victor is could like I said, Victor by himself could fill up two rooms like this and still have extra work. So, like I said, uh, this is a small, small sample of this particular artist. And what we're doing with Victor is hopefully Victor will start joining us more and more on the southeast side because he's basically located north and west. But we realize that we need his caliber down here as an organizer and as a, as a movement because of his expertise and what he does. He's very important to us in the community. That's why he was invited to the show and hopefully that we impress him enough so that he can come back and start uh, participating with us more as we progress on what we're doing. Again, in this corner here, it's a little bit dark over here, but then again, this is the work, again, myself, Roman Villarreal. Now, what's interesting about me as a painter, very few people actually see me as a painter for only one reason, I'm a sculptor. Uh, and I, I, but I have almost 700 paintings. The only thing is that my paintings have, are not that well known by anybody because I kind of keep them low key. I'm just starting now to start exhibiting my works and they go through all the subject matters. I, go, I deal with all kinds of things. This particular one deals with the same pose except I did would just change it but it's the same thing. It goes from the Virgin Mary, flowers, the, the three flowers, three flowers. Now this is the same woman with three children and the flowers but this time her back is turned. So I'm doing little subtle things with my paintings. Because see, what happens with a painter, when people start discovering you, the oddest thing that happens with a painter that's different from a sculptor is when people start buying your work, they want your soul. The soul is what people look for in the artist's painting, what he's offering, what he's showing, what colors he's using. So these are very, very important things because it, a, a, a painter is more of, I, I'm a sculptor by profession. And we do share kind of the same ex feelings, but painting is a little bit more personal. It's more deeper because of what you're doing, the colors you're using. Even though stone, I've learned to express myself in stone, painting is still the one that I think everybody wants to really see because that's your soul. And this is a little tidbit into the soul of Roman Villarreal. But then I have 700 paintings that hopefully in the near future, I'm not, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that you're gonna see all 700, but I'll be able to start showing more of my work as time goes on because I have an extensive collection. And if anybody's ever interested in seeing more of this, feel free to contact us because, like I said, I have a lot. Now, this is another example of Roman Villarreal again. <coughs> but what I'm doing here is there's a material that I picked up in, in Indiana called soy. I just started working with this material maybe about a year and a half ago. And what this material is, this used to be asbestos they used to use for pipes. But what's happening now, this company in Indiana switched to soy, and I had a friend of mine that brought me some samples of this material and said, hey, Roman, what can you do with this? And lo and behold, it was a workable material. I like what was going on, and it works for us. So I was able to do, along with a series of other artists, I think there's about four of us that are working with this material, and we put together an extensive, extensive show that we're going to be doing soon with this particular material. It's lightweight. It's, it's clean, it's environment, it's green friendly. Uh, you know, it's every, like every material that, that you work with in art, it has its drawbacks. It's a little bit powdery or stuff, but... Is that but dangerous then, to, your, to your lungs? Uh, it? No, but, but, but like all things as an artist, you have to be careful with your health. Even sim something as simple as pain is harmful to you if it's exposed to you in the wrong way. Now, what I always suggest when anybody works with any kind of material, use safety precaution. Wear a mask, gloves, safety glasses, which is very, very important. But also understand your materials and what can go wrong with the materials. In this case, we, we checked out this material and found out that it was safe enough for us to work with without hurting ourselves. But that's a very, very important thing to always remember as an artist, your safety and what you're working with. Because sometimes you could be working with something simple and put yourself in danger. You don't do that because you're too important to the world to hurt yourself while you're experimenting. That's why it's always good to ask a fellow artist who's doing something similar, and if they could experiment, they could share with you. And we are the first group of artists that if you, if you ever ask us, we will definitely share with you. We will definitely share techniques, opinions, or this and this, because that's, that's part of what we do. It's very important for us, you know, to share what we're doing, because art is not just like sports. Art is more freedom. We could all sit together and do the same thing and none of us will ever create the same image. That's why it's so important that in the arts 
You never look at it as, a, as something competitive because it never was meant to be. It's, it was meant to be uh, uh, something that you're sharing with the world. This is not competition. This is not sports. This is nothing. Because we could, we could all sit down right now and do a still life, and all the still life that we do will all be different. It would be our approach, our color, what we see. It's interesting because we could all sit together, do a still life or a, or a portrait of somebody, and we're all going to capture something totally different from the subject matter, which is always interesting. It will never come out twice the same thing. Okay, this is my newest works in this, in this material. Over here, we have the artist, another sample of Robert Valadez. This is just a small sample, like I said. We brought, we invited our, uh, Robert out here because of uh, his expertise and his history and what he's been doing in the mural movement. We're very, very proud to have uh, Robert join us in this event, you know, because number one, it's very important that the community gets to meet him because he might be doing a possible mural here in the community very, very soon. So that's why it's very important for the community if they have an opportunity to come and see who Robert Valadez is because we have a, a treasure that down to us. Hopefully, whatever he does, our children or our young artists here on the South East Side in South Chicago who are calling themselves slash slash hip hop tagging this will see what a real artist is and try to follow in his footsteps or, or at least attempt to participate with him and learn the other elements. Because all these young people that are out there doing what they're doing now, they're artists. It's just that they're kind of a little bit confused on their materials. But once they get introduced to people like myself, Robert Valadez, Trads, or anybody in this particular group, their outlook looks different because now they have a purpose and a, and a, a thing with their art. See, right now when they're young, uh, they're just doing it for uh, publicity or just to put their name. It's very important to them. But they don't realize that they're really artists. Whatever they're doing now is development for the future. So all these young artists that are tagging and doing their thing right now, this, you come to us and no, nobody in this room or in this show will ever turn you away if you're sincere enough to, be, to follow up with us as an artist. I see a lot of these young artists from the community eventually stepping into the Art Institute and we'll be going to their shows. I just want to share this with them. These are all welcome to come in with us at any time. So this is an open invitation to all my young fellow artists who are out there in South Chicago and the East Side, who are doing their thing. And if you ever really want to get another introduction, feel free to talk to Roman or any of the artists or come to our show here. We'll introduce you and hopefully we'll all put ourselves on the right track and become positive for our community. Because even though they're tagging and doing and everybody's mad at you, one day you will be the future artist. So you're very important to us. Now, the last works that we're showing here, I'm going to turn this light on, I don't know if it's going to be helpful. This is another fellow artist from Panama. His name is Ronaldo Fernando Fernandez. This is just a small, small sample. He's one of the artists that's working with me with, uh, with the, the foam that we're working with right now with this soy product. He has a lot of work. This is just a small, small. Now, one interesting thing about people that come from a um, third world country, they work harder than any other people I've ever known. I mean, when you see what he does, you're, you're amazed, you're amazed. Because he'll do any show, every show. I mean, see, this is the drive that we all should have. At one time. We all have it, but some have it more than others. This particular artist goes to every, and I don't care, there's no show that you say, hey, Fernando, Rolando, we're going to do this and this. I'll be there. You know, and we're going to do show, okay, I'll be there. He doesn't, he's a, he's a he's, he knows how to market his work. And this is one of the things that we all have to learn to, how, is to market and put our works out there. He has mastered that because he could does every show, everything, and and uh, and it's and his work is so collectible and so bright and colorful. It's unbelievable. Like I said, this is just a small sample because you gotta understand. See, a lot of us who master certain things, we don't use certain elements. Like a lot of us won't use glitter. We won't do this. But then there's some artists that are outside that nothing is sacred. You know, if you go to the audience, and say, oh, never do this, never do this. There's restrictions to it. But when you're outside, you're always experimenting and doing this. So everything that you do works because, you know, until it fails for you, then you know it didn't work. But if you went to school and told him, hey, nobody's going to take glitter in the work because that's a no-no. But it works for him. Now behind him is, again, is another work from uh, Yimmy, the Sharpie King. And uh, this shows you, the, 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 I mean, there, there's so little that you could say about Yimmy because Yimmy is... Just a artist. I mean, when you see the works that he accomplishes and does, they're just unbelievable. Now, 
What the community has here, if you were a collector or something, you have the opportunity to purchase and support the artist because everybody here is giving a really good deal in this community. But what happens here is once the community starts seeing, well, uh, my compadre bought this, hey, I like it, it looks nice on your wall, where did you get it from? They encourage each other to start buying the works from the community. And it's long overdue in this community for this type of support. Now while we're, well, now while we're discussing support, I would like to have the opportunity to, to plug a few people that are very supportive on what we're doing. Number one, Alderman Pope. Alderman Pope has been supportive of the arts since we first met. You know, even though the movement is slow and growing here in South Chicago, but every time that we've ever had any event or any kind of something that deals with the arts, Alderman Pope has been very, very supportive in his staff. They're very supportive of what we're doing. What we have to start doing with the community is start showing them the level that we are actually at. Even though they're supporting us, it's up to us to show them that we can carry this to a whole new level. That's why this show right here that's so important, even if you don't come see it, if you see this on YouTube, you'll be able to see exactly what we're trying to do. We're trying to encourage more and more business people to come out and participate, see our shows, and actually see what we're doing. Not just listen to me talking and say, oh, I could do this, I could do this. No, come and see what we're doing. Because once you see it, you will walk away with a different outlook on what we're doing. That's why it's so important to us. Like, uh, like uh, right now with Yolanda Deanda from the East Side Chain. Anyways, she is so important to us because it was so simple. Yolanda asked us one day, hey, Roman, what's going on? What do you guys need? Well, we're looking for this, Yolanda, we need this. He goes, what? I got something for you. This is, this is an, a, a person who... Not, may not necessarily know us, but it's supportive enough that the artist to open up her door and say, you guys are welcome. Now, the only reason that Yolanda isn't here, I think she hurt her, her foot or something and sprained her ankle or did something, so she wasn't able to join us. But hopefully, <laughs> Yolanda, we want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts. That, that, that you, you're doing a really good thing, what we're doing, and hopefully that what we're doing benefits everything that's, that we're all hoping for. Because from this here, we're trying to bring in teachers, uh, community, uh, any, uh, anybody wants to come here, join us, and while this show is up, to at least learn and, and just like a see, to see what's going on here. Another very important person that's been with us for a long, long time, Jackie Samuels. She's been with us in the struggle from the very, very beginning. It got disheartening for her, it gets discouraging, and this and that. But she's developing the spirit of the artist. Nothing disillusions us. Nothing stops us. All we do is keep going forward, keep going forward in, in a certain sense because like if somebody tells us this, that never stops us. Well, we can't have this. It still never stops us. What our role now is in this particular video and what we're trying to do is to reach an audience that, that just, just generally comes to our shows. And we're allowing you to come in and view what it would be like if you came in and seen our show. If you came in and see our show, you'd be able to shake our hands, uh, view more of what we're doing and share with us what's going on here and the spirit that we're trying to to share with everybody else because it's very very important that our young children from our community are aware that there is a life in the arts thank you South Chicago for joining us and if we forgot anybody uh, it was just because this is a quick thing and but everybody is welcome and I'm um, hopefully this works out for everybody and you will join us and again, thank you for joining us under the bridge. This is Roman Villarreal, and thank you very much.